Hey everyone, Tyler from Stock Scores. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the common day trading strategies and give you my thoughts on which ones work best. All right, welcome to this video on day trading strategies. A reminder to subscribe to the Stock Scores channel on YouTube and also to click on the alarm button to get instant email updates every time I upload a new video. All right, let's get into this topic, day trading strategies. There are, as Mahatma Gandhi once said, a thousand ways to the top of the mountain. And that is also true for trading. There are many ways to trade the stock market. What I want to do in this video is walk you through some of the most common approaches. And by no means is this an exhaustive list. It's just things that most people tend to do. I also want to show you how each one works in a very basic way. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you some insight into what I have found works the best and what I also think are some of the traps with some of these strategies. So what are the day trading strategies? You have mean reversion, dream crushers, alpha traders, scalping, and momentum. And I'll go through each of those one at a time and explain what they are. Now, I've applied my own names to some of these, so they may not make sense to you just yet, but as I go through them, you will probably recognize some of these approaches. So let's start with mean reversion. Mean reversion is shorting stocks that are overbought near resistance or buying stocks that are oversold near support. Now this could be a stock that is trending and tends to run up a little too quickly and then pulls back and pulls back a little too far. It is a common strategy for algorithmic traders, the big investment funds that use computers to trade the market. They will short the market when it goes up, when a particular stock goes up too fast or the overall market goes up too fast. And then they will buy the market back when it pulls back too much and gets a little bit oversold. And you can apply indicators like a stochastic or RSI or some indicators of your own making to do this. Now let's take a look at an example. And this is one that I grabbed from today. This is shares of Apple. And you can see that today the trend in Apple is down. And so you would want to favor short selling, but you can actually buy and sell a stock like this using the mean reversion day trading strategy. And what I would tend to do is look at the space that exists between the uh, moving average and where price is. And when that space gets large, then you want to look for a break of trend. And so we have that occurring a couple of times when you're far below the moving average and that implies you are oversold and then you break the trend and that is an indication that the market is likely to rally higher. Now this is a good strategy if you have a lot of capital to work with because it works best with very liquid, more large cap stocks and stocks that you know run up uh, or run back or fall quickly uh, in their trend, they get overbought, they get oversold, and the computers that are run by these big algorithmic trading firms will jump in and either buy oversold or sell overbought, and you can ride the coattails of those computers doing that. So that is one uh, really good strategy for those that have more capital to trade with because you're taking, I would say, relatively smaller profits on a percentage basis, but you can do it over and over and over again and really pick 10 or 15 of your favorite large cap, actively traded, more volatile stocks and trade them accordingly. All right, so the next one I call dream crushers. Now this is my own name, you've probably never heard this before, but the idea here is that we are taking advantage of maybe marginally uh, marginal stocks in terms of fundamentals that run up very quickly on promotion or hype, that sort of thing. So you'll get these stocks that, particularly in the biotech sector, that issue some bit of news that sounds very good on the surface, and they move up very quickly, perhaps gapping up significantly on the open, but the reality is the news is more hype than anything else. And those stocks will eventually come back down to earth. Now the key is to not jump in front of the freight train because even though the news may be more hype than anything else, those stocks can often, often run a long way before they make their pullbacks. And so the key here is to not short them too early. And so what I like to do is look for uh, stocks that are trading very heavy volume, probably gapped up, 
are moving very quickly are probably lower price stocks, stocks under $10. And then I look for their trend to go parabolic. So on the image that you see, I have a stock that did this this week. It made a big gap up. You can see the volume was very strong. And the trend here was linear and then it went parabolic. And that's what I wanna see is that parabolic trend because when stocks go parabolic, it occurs because investors are getting very emotional. They are buying because of a fear of missing out or people who were shorting too early are having to cover their shorts at any cost. And that causes price to run irrationally higher. And you can always tell an irrational stock by the shape of its trend line. If the trend line goes parabolic, that implies emotion in the market. And then what you wanna watch for is a break of that parabolic trend line as a signal to short. And look what happened in this case, it sold off quite sharply. All right, our next one, alpha traders. This is looking for stocks that are trading on significant news or perhaps significant rumors. Stocks that capture the interest of the market, whether good or bad, long or short, that really are going to make strong directional moves for the day. And this is actually what I tend to do most of the time. And it's really looking for those stocks that are the hot stocks of the day that are attracting the crowd. And again, I'm happy to buy them. I'm happy to short sell them, whether they're going up or down. What the sort of key thing to look for in identifying these stocks is abnormal activity, abnormal volume and abnormal price. And when I see that, I try to catch them as early as possible and then ride the trend for the following couple of hours, sometimes the entire day. Now I've actually created processes and indicators that I use inside TradeStation to identify these things before most people catch them. I can usually catch them in the opening two minutes of the day if that's when they start to move or within two minutes of them starting to move. And I jump on them early and then ride that trend until the trend is broken. So here's an example from today as I do this video. It happened just this morning. It didn't happen right at the open. The actual break or my entry signal that I look for happened at I think 9.58 a.m. Eastern time. On the chart that you see on screen, you'll see a bunch of lines drawn and there's also some pink dots or purple dots. So those pink dots, which you see there, and there's another one hidden right there and another one there, those are something I call an action candle and they are indicative of a stock that is attracting buyers at a very rapid pace. And I found this one right where I'm circling there and the lines that you see drawn on screen are something called reward for risk lines. I actually have this strategy programmed into the computer to identify it automatically and then calculate my reward for risk earned. And so that's something that's available to my students. You can learn more about that on the stockscores.com website. So I love this strategy. It's the one that I do most of the time. And what I like about it is that it gives you big price moves for the day in a relatively short amount of time. Unlike mean reversion where you're sort of taking small profits, this one you can take 30, 40, sometimes 100 or more percent in just a few hours on these stocks that are the hot ones of the day. And it goes both ways. You can short sell with that strategy as well. All right, next strategy, scalping. Scalping is really trading for small profits and taking advantage of maybe a wider bid ass spread on stocks that have less liquidity. So, you know, if a stock is bid at $10.10 and the offer is at $10.20, there's a 20 cent spread there. And if you can sell at the offer and buy at the bid, you can make that spread. Um, to do that, you have to have market depth, uh, something that the exchanges will give you. Now I'm showing you a screen now that has level two, which isn't as good as you can get. There's actually higher levels of market depth. So you can really see all the buyers and all the sellers lined up. A little bit of history behind scalping. Back in the mid to late 90s, there was the, the dominant um, exe order execution system was called SOS, the Single Order Execution System. And it was the way that traders like me and anyone else who traded at the time could see the people lined up to buy and the people lined up to sell. And there were some traders that recognized that there was some good information in that. If you saw a lot of people lined up to buy and not a lot of people lined up to sell, well, then you would um, try to buy in advance and then when the stock started to move, sell at the offer and just take advantage of that spread. And that was scalping. And you could have a bias based on what you saw on that level two screen. The problem today is that that, that method of trading has really been taken over by computers. 
when you hear about high frequency trading, one of the things that these high frequency trading computers are doing is is doing what the old SOS bandits used to do, and that is take advantage of liquidity pockets and buy it, uh, you know, on the one side of the spread and sell it the other side of the spread to make that little bit of profit and do. 500 trades a day is what these old uh, individual human traders would do. Well, now computers can do that much more effectively and really do thousands of trades a day where, you know, maybe on each trade they're only making five to ten dollars, but because they do it over and over and over again, make a lot of money with it. So scalping in my mind isn't something that works all that great anymore because the computers have taken over. And so I caution people with this strategy and I'll touch on that a little bit more when I give you my thoughts on each of the strategies. All right, so moving along, let's take a look at the momentum approach. Momentum is simply finding stocks that are trending and try to buy them on breaks of pullbacks or breaks of pull-ups. Essentially, you're taking stocks that are strong or weak and trying to get into them at a point when risk reward is good, where the uh, potential payoff is better than the potential risk. So if we look at a chart, here's a stock that's trending well. And what we would do here is, you know, when the stock is making a pullback, try to by the breaks of those pullbacks. So they pull back to their trend line, and when they pull back to the trend line, you buy them there, and then perhaps be a seller when they run away from the trend line so that you can you know, be in and out of a stock many times, or even just ride it as it trends higher, but because you're waiting for pullbacks and you're buying on pullbacks, you're able to establish a better risk reward relationship as you trade that trend. Now what humans tend to do is we tend to chase strength. And so in other words, instead of buying the pullbacks, they would buy the tops. And you know that's the last thing you wanna do as a trader. So the idea behind momentum trading is to not chase after strength and not do what human emotion tells you to do, but instead to work counter to human emotion and try to get stocks that are strong for the day or strong for the week, but are showing a little bit of weakness and then buy them when they break that weakness. And you can flip all that upside down for short selling as well. All right, finally, low floaters. These are the stocks that uh, you hear about, often penny stocks or stocks under five, $10, that don't have many shares outstanding. Now there are websites where you can go, uh, Finviz is one, finviz.com, where you can go to see what the total number of shares outstanding a company has and also the number of shares that are available to trade by the public, and that's called the float. So any stock that has, say, less than 20 million shares outstanding, a float less than 20 million, I would consider low float. And there's some that are really low. You can find stocks that have a publicly traded float that is less than a million shares. Now you can imagine that if there's only a million shares out there to trade, and you can attract a crowd to that stock to buy it, all of a sudden that stock starts trading millions of shares and it's trading its float over and over and over again. And because there's just not a lot of supply of stock available to buy, these stocks can move up very quickly. I've seen some that move 500% or more in a day. They can also fall very quickly when the bubble bursts. But in the meantime, if you can latch onto these low float stocks that are tightly held, whoever's promoting that stock, whoever's running the the market for that stock, they can really manipulate these stocks and push them higher. Now we can take a cynical view of that and say, why would you want to touch a stock that A, doesn't have great fundamentals, is really moving up simply because of its share structure. And you're right, they're not companies you want to hold long term, but as a day trader, you can make a lot of money trading these low float stocks if you know how to do it. And the key thing as always is to not chase after strength. Second thing you have to think about with these types of trades, is that oftentimes these stocks are all hype, there's no real fundamentals behind it, and the exchanges don't really like to see a stock that has kind of weak news move up a thousand percent in a day. And so you will find that they get halted a lot with circuit breakers. And the other thing is sometimes they get halted because the exchange says this is a scam and we're not gonna let this happen. And so you can get caught owning a stock that ultimately gets halted for perhaps months and then when it finally comes back, instead of being listed on the NASDAQ market, it might be listed on the OTC bulletin board. So there's, a, there's an added risk to doing that. And so although I love to trade low float stocks, I never put a lot of capital into them simply because there is that risk of them getting halted and never coming back. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened to me a couple of times. 
but because I've never had a, a large dollar position in something like that, it hasn't really hurt me. You know, a couple of times I had to sit on a dog and then eventually sell it at a loss, but dollar terms relative to my overall trading portfolio wasn't significant. So low floaters, great to trade, lots of fun, lots of action. Just be cautious about the fact that they could get halted and don't put all your eggs into one basket. So here is an example of one that uh, was just a couple of days ago at the time I'm doing this video. And again, you can see my little pink dot on this chart. That's what uh, attracted my attention to it. Trading abnormally, very low float stock, and it went absolutely parabolic and moved up. You know, you can see there from an entry signal price of around $3 to over $12. That's 400% gain in just a few hours. That's the kind of potential that you get with those low float stocks. So my thoughts then on all these different strategies. And I've kind of touched on a lot of the things that I think are important to consider with them. Mean reversion, I think is a good strategy if you have a lot of capital to deal with. Find those very liquid stocks that are trending well and just short them when they run away from their trend line, buy them when they really fall down below their trend line. And you're taking advantage of the market being very liquid and orderly and you can move in and out of these stocks quite effectively. You can also use options to trade that because stocks like Apple and these very um, liquid, high um, market cap stocks, Facebook, another one, Netflix, they have options that are also very liquidly traded. So you can you know, leverage the, the leverage of options to trade them without having to have a lot of capital but you do have to be super disciplined with this strategy and really look for that overbought, oversold nature, maybe find an indicator that helps you to do that. Dream crushers, I think is a great strategy. However, it's very difficult for most people to execute because the stocks that make those astronomical moves higher uh, very quickly, perhaps some of those low float stocks, they can be very difficult to short because your broker won't have inventory. And so although I see people on Twitter saying, oh, I shorted blah, 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 you know, this, uh, this dream crusher type stock that moved up 400% and then went right back down again. In reality, for most people to be able to short those stocks, it's very difficult. And so don't be swayed by what you maybe see in videos or, or Twitter feeds where guys say, I made 40 grand uh, shorting this stock you have to have a, a certain kind of broker and you also have to have a good relationship with that broker to be able to get the inventory to short them. And oftentimes the inventory is gone very quickly and so you can't even short sell them. So I love the strategy. I try to do it often, but a lot of the time I just can't get the stock to borrow in order to short sell. It, it also, uh, it takes a tremendous amount of discipline to do that because if you get on the wrong side of those shorts, you can get crushed very quickly. So make sure you use stops, make sure you don't let your ego get in the way. And you know, these things always burst eventually, but sometimes they go a heck of a lot higher than they should before they actually break down. On the alpha traders, as I said, this is my favorite strategy. I find it's most consistent. Uh, it's the way that I can find 10 to 20 trades per day, sometimes even more, 40, 50 trades a day with some of my strategies. And so there's a plentiful number of opportunities. They tend to have a high probability of success. I would say 70%, which is high for trading. And the average profit per trade is pretty decent. So with lots of opportunities, with a good process and a good set of indicators to find them, um, I, I love this strategy. And this is the one that I spend the majority of my time doing. I do think it takes some trading skill that takes practice because you have to be quick at entering orders. You have to have a really good process to identify them before the crowd gets them. And that's some of the things that I teach in my uh, day trading courses available at stockscores.com. Next up, scalping. As I said, I just don't think it's realistic these days. I'm sure there are some people who still do it and they maybe have success. I don't hear about them anymore. 15, 20 years ago, it was a common thing to do and there's lots of people making money at it but the computers have taken that over. So if you know someone that does it, I'd love to hear about it because I just don't hear about it anymore and, and perhaps I'm incorrect in saying so, but I think it's a dead strategy. Momentum, again, I, I like this strategy. I think it's more a, uh, a, a strategy for people with a lot of capital who can utilize that capital to take big positions in these large cap stocks. You know, you can buy a million dollars of Apple stock in a few seconds 
You can't do that with a small cap stock. So if you have a lot of capital to trade with, you can have you know, your favorite 10 stocks and you just move in and out of them as they get overbought, oversold and show signs of correcting back to where they should go. Great. Um, I find that I get more profitability out of trading alpha stocks, but some people really like trading that momentum method and I think it's worth considering uh, if that's your style. So those are my thoughts. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please click on the like button if you have. Subscribe to the channel. There's a little uh, alarm button. If you want email alerts when I upload new videos, make sure you click on that alarm button once you have subscribed and then you'll get uh, instant email alerts when I upload a new video. Also remember, we're always doing live webinars on stockscores.com. So go to the upcoming events area of the website. You will see all of the uh, upcoming events that we have, as well as some of the paid events that we offer for our members. Most of the events that we do webinar wise are free. So go to the stockscores.com website, trader training, upcoming events, and you can register for those there. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Trade well.